Hello everybody, Nick again here with Scog and Dicky. Today's tech video, we are going to be discussing push rod length and why it's so important to make sure to get this right before assembling your engine. Now what I have here is the LS2 engine that I've been working on. We took another field trip out to my shop and luckily I actually have to measure the push rods for this engine. So today, let's see what it takes to make sure we get this right. Now, when you call us at Scog and Dickey for a cam recommendation, whether it's one of our in-house cams or a custom one we have made for you, we can always pair up a lot of great components for you, you know, uh, high pressure valve spring, springs, titanium retainers, and we can definitely get you set up on a set of push rods. The only problem is what length? And we get a lot of phone calls. People ask, hey, this is the combination I'm running. These are, this is the cam, this is the head gasket, and this is all that I've done. Uh, what push rod length do I need? Well, that's actually kind of hard to answer, and that's why most places, when you give them a call, they might say the usual 7400, but most of the time, they're gonna ask you to measure, and it's actually pretty important, and there's a few reasons why. Over the years, when camshafts were first being made for the LS1, everything was still stock, everything was still new. And most cams, well, they had relatively the same lift. So the stock push rod is actually a 7385 is, is the real length measurement. But a lot of them recommended a 7400. You're going back to all stock stuff, you're using kind of generically the same kind of cam load profiles, there was a good chance you, that 7400 would do fine. Today though, as the time has gone on, there's a lot that's been done to these engines. We're all picking up used parts from the junkyard. We don't know where they've been, if they've been in a machine shop, if they've been decked, or, well, there's actually a lot of things. You could deck the block, you could use a different thickness head gasket. You could deck the cylinder heads. And as well as, of course, the base circle, the camshaft, changing how far or high this comes up and down. Another one I've noticed is valve jobs. Now, a valve job doesn't move the valve too much, but I've seen some valve jobs at some machine shops where it really seats the valve pretty deep, which makes it come out of the head quite a bit more. And as it hits the rocker arm, that can change your push rod length too. So you can see why it's a little bit difficult for us to determine the exact push rod length that you need over the phone. We're not there to help you measure, even though we wish we could. So today we're gonna show you. I have a CompCams push rod length checking tool here. Looks like a push rod, but it's actually threaded and it measures between 6.8 to 7.8, which is the range we need. We know we're gonna be pretty close to 7,400. We just need to figure out where. <clears throat> so let's get started. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step what it takes to measure and the math that you need to do. Now, this tool, as you can see here, has a little notch to let you know when it's made one full revolution, like right now, it is at right at 6800. You make one turn outward and line that back up, that was 50 thousandths. So every full rotation outward is another 50 thousandths. So that's what we're gonna use to measure here. So let's, uh, made a couple revolutions there. Let's get it out to, you know, 6950. Seven, seven one, seven two, Seven three, so what I've done here is I've rotated this out to about seven three hundred. This is a good starting ballpark. We know it's going to be close to seven four hundred, but we start a little short, and I'll show you why here in a second. The next step that you need to do is to rotate that the camshaft around so where it's on the base circle, so the lifter is riding on the smaller part of the camshaft. And I'm gonna show you how to do that here. I'm actually gonna put the tool in the push rod hole for a moment. And I'm gonna put my finger holding it down. And then I'm gonna take a socket wrench. I'm gonna turn the engine over a few revolutions. And here's what you're feeling for. Turn it clockwise here. We are feeling for when the cam pushes this push rod up because that's where we know where we don't need to be. So let's get a couple revolutions here. Oh, there we are. And it feels like, yep, I'm right about the peak there. So I know that if I do one full revolution, I am at the base circle. The camshaft spins half as much as the crankshaft. So I know I got 180 degrees to the other side of the cam. Now that we know that we're on base circle, we can go on to the next step. The next step would be to take your rocker arm with your socket, the factory bolts are eight millimeters. Some of the aftermarket ones use uh, like an Allen key or something like that. So of course, make sure you have the right tools. Make sure you're using the rocker arm that you're going to be using. If you use an aftermarket rocker arm, don't check your push rod length within a stock rocker. 
that'll mess up your readings. For the same reason, I've already assembled this engine with the gaskets, head bolts have been torqued down, it's almost ready to go. You need to do the same thing. It's not really a place you wanna have some guesswork. So we're gonna take this rocker arm, we're gonna put it here on the intake side, and we're gonna tighten this in by hand. I got a little, little tool here to help me spin it faster for you. We're gonna spin this all the way down. We're gonna make sure it's just finger tight. And what we're looking for is zero lash. So, might be a little loose, but we definitely don't want it tight. Let's take a look here. Geez, that actually looked like I might've gotten a little too close on the first try. There's not very much wiggle room in here. So let's back it off and try again. There's a lot of trial and error with this procedure, so have a little bit of patience. It'll pay off in the long run. So we backed it off again, take it off. So I was at 7350. Also be careful when handling this tool. All these tools are about the same. This is a comp cams one I have. These are actually uh, really great. I believe the part number is a 7702-1 if you want to get on our website and order one. Um, but they are very sensitive. They can twist. So be careful when you start taking your measurements. Pull it out carefully. Reinstall it carefully. But let's turn it right back. Let's turn one more. Let's go 50,000 shorter. Because I think that 7350 was actually really close. Make sure it's seated in there well. Let's put the rock arm back on. Again, you want this to be nice and hand snug. You don't want to torque this down. It's not exactly necessary just yet. Let's see here. Ah, there we go. There's a... Man, 7300. See, that's pretty amazing. I am using a Cometic 40 thousandths gasket. It's about 11 thou shorter, so that adds up. I'm also using a brand new block, so I'm kind of surprised to find it that short. But what I will say is I know these cylinder heads have been remanned. So like I said before, if I would have ordered some 7400 push rods, I kind of might have gone a little too long here. But that's about right. The other thing you have to factor in here is lifter preload. You're not setting this to zero lash. You're actually setting a little bit of preload. There's a plunger in that lifter. The LS7 lifter, for instance, the one that's the most common, it has about 200 thou of travel. It's quite a bit. And I believe the spec on it is somewhere between 30 to 60,000. Some people say 50 to 100,000. So I kind of aim somewhere 50, 70, somewhere in that ballpark. You have a lot of playroom here, which is pretty forgiving. <clears throat> so that's another thing to remember. Now, 7300 was a little loose. 7350 was too tight. So let's go right in the middle. Let's take this back out. Let's do a half turn. Put it right about there. It's kind of hard to see half on this because of the marks. Put it in carefully and do it one more time. Kind of like what I was saying. This is a tedious process. There's a lot of patience required when doing this because you're constantly threading a rocker back in, pulling it back out, making measurements. Don't forget a notepad and a pen too. Sometimes you have to write this stuff down or you're gonna do it a bunch. I'm sure like some of y'all, I wasn't that great at math, so I can't keep a whole lot of numbers in my head at one time. Let's just take a look, nice and hand snug here. That's good. Oh, that's almost perfect. That's almost perfect. So now that we know that we're right on it, Let's pull this back out. Now we can make note where our notches were and count backwards as we thread it back towards the base. Remember, when this is shortened all the way up, it's 6800. So we got one full turn, two full turns, three full turns, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and <laughs> 10, right on the nose, 10 exact full turns. So what is that, right at half an inch? So seven, 300 is where we're at, but don't buy seven, three push <laughs> rods just yet. You'll get it wrong. Lift or preload, like I was saying earlier. Now I could go seven, 350, seven, three, seven, five, I could do 7400. Remember, it's a wide range. 
I think the manufacturer says anywhere between 30 to 60 thousandths on LS7 lifters. Most shops have put these together and the experience that we've had, actually about 50 thousandths to right at 100 thou is actually a good preload as well. It's 200 thousandths total is what that plunger will move inside that lifter. So you got a lot of wiggle room here. It's pretty forgiving. Um, so yeah, I can actually pick a 7350 or a 7400, but I'm not exactly done. I know some of y'all probably winced at me saying that, but the thing is, is that that was the intake. Now I gotta check the exhaust. As well as I also like to check the corners of each of them. I have had it where the cylinder head wasn't machined straight. And that can be kind of a nightmare too, is when you find out that one side needs 7450, the other side needs 7300. And even worse, the other side needs a completely different length. So always make sure to do extra checks on this stuff. It is important, uh, not only for the condition of your valve train, but I have actually had moments where I have accidentally put in the wrong length push rod, firing an engine up, and it sounded like a broken sewing machine. And there's nothing worse than building an engine and putting it in your project car and the very first thing you hear when you fire up is tapping. You immediately are heartbroken. You don't know if it's your crank, you don't know if it's rod bearings, you don't know what you did. And so tearing this back apart when you think you're done is terrible. So check this stuff, make sure to do it right. Make sure to stop by for one of our uh, tech videos next week. I gotta get back and uh, check the rest of these. Well, it looks like I'm all done here. I think 7350 is going to be exactly what this engine needs, which is good. We really appreciate you guys stopping by for all of our tech videos. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, any other ideas you have for anything else you need to know about engine building for these Gen 3, Gen 4, and Gen 5 LT engines, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Give us a like, a subscribe, and a share on YouTube and Facebook, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.